Oh my goodness, my ah! Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I just called my bum a kisser. Uh, but in any case, we got a lot for you today. Oh, this still hurts. <laughs> China actually reaches a deal with the U.S. about potentially auditing Chinese companies and prevent a delisting. We got to talk about that, as funny as it sounds. Also, Elizabeth Warren is trying to cloud chase again on the expense of the human piñata. Mr. John Powell, we got to talk about again. I can't believe I'm about to defend John Powell, but even Warren is actually worse than John Powell. The stock market is still in a bit of a hissy fit after what John Powell did out of Jackson's Hall. We got to talk about that. Netflix is coming out with the new and improved ad-based subscription for $9. Got to talk about that. And an absolutely, unbelievably, insanely good article on Doomberg about what happened with Bad Bath and Bad Bath ba Beyond and Ryan Cohen. Absolutely terrific. I'm going to give you a taste. And if you actually want to read it, you have to go and get it. But this isn't sponsored by Doomberg. So, you know. So first of all, let's talk about China. So China, I just have a list right here of things I got to talk about. You know, let's just do, let's do China first, right? Everybody wants to hear about China. I think I broke my chair. Anyways, China has reached a deal with the U.S. about potentially allowing the PCAOB this is what you do for me. <laughs> R E E P C T. I forget the name. You know the respect song. R E E S P. I can't do this. <laughs> can we put some B roll of the R E S P C T? Whatever. R E S P C T. <laughs> Anyways, China is signing a deal with the U.S. about potentially allowing the U.S. to audit and actually supervise the Chinese auditors. Now, in China, there's the same four entities who actually supervise every single company and audit every single company, the same way like we have in the entire globe, which is PwC, KPMG, EY, and Deloitte. Now, the problem is that these are local branches of these brands, and they're not always, I'm just saying, they're not always the same standard of quality as the ones that you think about in the US or the UK, for that matter. Now, look, I have a problem with what we just heard about this, but I'm also going to be level with you. I'm not going to be sitting here and ignoring. The fact is that the chance of the listing of Chinese companies is now less than it was before we got this news. So it's not like it doesn't change anything. Yes, the chances of the listing have been reduced, but that's as far as I'm going to go. And that also exactly what is Gary Gensler saying. Gary Gensler said in his little note that he put out, basically saying, hey, guys, don't celebrate just yet. This is just the first step, and we don't know if they're actually going to comply with this shit. We don't know. It just, you know, remains to be seen. Let's see what happens. Look, I don't even understand what's the point of this. If I, There's a law, and I have to comply with the law. I either comply with the law, or I don't comply with the law, and then I face the penalties. What happens if I say to the officer who's pulling me over, for speeding, let's say. And I say, well, officer, I'm willing to sign an agreement that even though I haven't done so before, going forward, I will do every attempt to comply with the law. You're going to go to jail, motherfucker. <laughs> so the Chinese authorities are now saying, well, we will comply with the law, make best efforts to comply with the law. Motherfucker, it's the law. It's not like you can sign an agreement to comply with the law. Why are they getting so much slack? to even do this deal. I just don't understand this. Now, the other question here is, will they go through with this? We will find out in about a month, which will be interesting to see. I doubt it that they will fully go through with this. I foresee, although who knows, I foresee more issues with this. The Chinese have been known to come out with these bombastic statements, but then, you know, when the rubber meets the road, uh, I don't know, let's see what happens. Let's see if they actually comply. Let's say they comply with this. And let's say that the, the listing sword is now removed from Chinese companies in the US. Does it make Alibaba and their compadres investable again? Hell no. Because there's still a myriad of problems with these companies. VIE structure, which is basically that you don't own the stock and they can pull the rug under you at any given moment. Not to mention the lack of rule of law in China, not to mention the political instability, the BFF relationship with Russia, and basically the complete energy crisis, demographic crisis, and real estate market crisis that goes on in China. So I have a lot of issues with the Chinese companies as an investment, even without this delisting sort. This was just one of many issues. So 
it's just a step in the right direction. I agree with Gary Gensler. I can't believe I just said the sentence, but remains to be seen. And now let's move on to Elizabeth Warren. Now, Elizabeth Warren reminds me of this grandma who picks off the windows in the neighborhood and watches what every single person in the neighborhood does and calls the police to report that somebody has a little bit too much music, a little bit too much barbecue. She's that kind of get off my lawn lady. Now, look, Elizabeth Warren is going at John Powell again. Now, I understand that John Powell seems to you, Mrs. Warren, like an easy mark, like the human piñata that he has become. Even I took some shots at him. But your comments are absolutely asinine, and I'll explain why. So you're saying that you're concerned that John Powell is going to send the United States into recession. Well, first of all, obviously, you haven't heard, but recession is transitory. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, that I had to have. I had to, you know, I had to just give Powell just a little bit of this transitory thing. Uh, you know, seriously, like, look, Mrs. Warren. We cannot kill inflation without sending the economy into recession. This is literally what he's trying to do. The man is trying to cause a controlled recession to slow down inflation. So you're saying that you're concerned that he's going to succeed? <laughs> what are you on? I mean, I know politicians cloud chase for cheap votes and uh, this cheap up. The stock market is having a hissy fit today as well, uh, continuing the Friday hissy fit from what Jerome Powell did in Jackson Hole. Now, look. I don't understand what the fuss is about. Jerome Powell didn't really say anything out of the ordinary in Jackson Hall. He stood there for eight minutes, basically repeating every single thing he said in the past. Nothing new was said. But all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh shit, he said it again? This means he must be serious. Look, the fact that somebody says they're going to do something isn't really an indicator for me that they will. I mean, I'm Russian. <laughs> I've seen a lot of shit like this in my life when people say shit, but nothing actually happens. I mean, let's see this happen. But you have to understand, John Powell is kind of like the bouncer in the nightclub. Now, my buddy used to work as a bouncer in the nightclub for years, and he got into very few fights. You know why? Because people believe that he's going to fuck him up, and they don't want to be fucked up, so they don't start fights with the bouncers. So John Powell is basically trying to scare the market by doing this. <laughs> So he's doing that. So he did that once, he did it twice, he did it in Jackson Hole, and all of a sudden everybody's scared. So it, it just a, it, it's a fist pump. It's, it's a head fake. The market is now basically reacting like that. Shows me that people are now starting to take John Powell a little bit more seriously than they have after the whole, you know, kerfuffle of the transitory inflation. So at least it's a good sign that the markets are now taking John Powell more seriously. There's a bit more credibility to what the Fed is doing here. So at least that's the good news. The bad news is I fear, and I'm going to surprise you here, I fear Mr. Powell might not do what he says he'll do. Because as we come near midterms, the pressure on him politically is going to be so great, I don't think... I'm 100% positive he will actually follow through with what he said he will do. Not to mention the fact that his leverage, as far as how far he can go with this, is very different from the guy he quoted in his speech, which is Paul Volcker. He has a problem that Paul Volcker never had, which is the $31 trillion U.S. debt, which prevents the government and the Fed from actually raising rates beyond let's say four or five, six percent. Every percentage point is like 300 billion per year and there's only four billion per year we're making from taxes. So if we're going to raise interest that high, it means it has to come off out of education, healthcare, infrastructure just to pay for interest. We're already paying one and a half percent of our GDP for interest payments and it's about to be pretty much the biggest item in our um, budget within a few years. So he literally can't go too far with this. And also the political pressure by November is going to be great. So it's going to be interesting to see what he does. Uh, quick note, Netflix is coming out with this new plan to launch an ad-based discounted option. $9 per month, 7 to $9 per month. Will it save Netflix? No, and I'll tell you why. Mark my words, read my lips. The problem with Netflix isn't the price of the subscription. The problem with Maletflix, Maletflix, you know what? Let's just call them Maletflix. Who gives a fuck? The problem with Maletflix is their malekness of content. Netflix are no longer the content aggregator they were just a few years ago. When nobody had their own streaming service, people look at Netflix as another way to make money. Let's have our content. Let's put it on my Netflix, get some money from them. Boom, free money. Now everybody caught on. It's like the reseller dilemma, you know? When you are the manufacturer and you hire a reseller to sell your stuff in another country, the reseller isn't a problem. He can't sell too little because it's going to get canceled. He can't sell too good because they're going to basically say, well, that's a lot of sales. We're going to do it ourselves. Move, move over, right? Move to the side. So basically, 
Netflix have failed the reseller problem. They did too good of a job of being a great reseller and people have started their own streaming services and there's so many of them now, too much to count. And now they just, you know, brushed aside. There's literally not enough content. My friend I met who was sick for a week just called me yesterday and said, well, dude, there's really nothing on Netflix. I mean, this, it's just, there's no content, it's gone. So it's not about the price or the ad-based stuff, which I'm sure will help, but the problem with Netflix, they have to reinvent themselves because being a content producer is something they haven't done before. They don't have the financial resources to do long-term and they haven't really proved they can do it at a sustainable level because the stuff they're putting out are expensive and honestly just not that good. But let's see what happens. Finally, a huge shout out to Doomberg. This is not a sponsored video. I don't know Doomberg. I'm not getting paid by Doomberg. It's on Substack. Go check it out. It's insanely good. So they put up an article, which was absolute masterpiece. Bellissimo. Now in this article, they're talking about BBBBBBY and Mr. Ryan Cohen. And what they said is absolutely brilliant. They've built this plan, the three-step plan of how a pump and dump, legal pump and dump works. And they absolutely took Mr. Cohen apart, allegedly, in my opinion, you know, don't sue me, bro. But here's what they say. They basically say, well, there's three stages to every pump and dump. First of all, you quietly accumulate the stock. Number two, the next stage, you build a frenzy and you cause the stampede. Number three, you quickly sell off, leaving everybody to hold their penis. Now, they, and they show how he did it with BBBBBBBBBBY. Now, they basically say, well, look, in GameStop, Ryan Coyne went in seemingly with the full intention to actually revamp the business. And he's still holding the stock. He didn't sell. He's still deep into GameStop, and it seems to be like his next Chewy. So GameStop was actually a passion project for him. But what he found out, that's the theory of Doomberg, what he found out when he had the whole GameStop explosion of, you know, this, um, how should I call it without getting bad? Explosion of excitement, you know what I mean? When you're like, <laughs> he found out that he has a lot of power. He basically realized, that's what Doomberg is saying, that he can cause a lot of people to buy a lot of stocks by saying that he's buying more stock. And uh, he... Basically, according to what they're saying here, did the same thing with BBBBY. Essentially, what he's doing here, and they're showing this, he's basically buying up a lot of shares quietly, and then they released a, a, an SEC filing in which he bought a shit ton of options, 2023, blah, 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 January 2023, massive options. And then he causes stampede of all his loyals into the stock. He immediately sells it and makes $70 million with the whole process taking six months and basically says, well, sue me. It's legal, 100% legal, everything. I just disclose everything, I said everything. It is what it is. And they're saying, well, look, Ryan, this might be legal, but it's definitely not moral. So they're saying the GameStop experience taught Ryan Coyne how to make quick money, and he utilized it with BBY, BBBY, whatever their name is. And it's, I think the, the article is absolutely brilliant. Go read the full article, it's amazing. Thank you so much for staying with me. I love you all. Want to say a huge thank you to everybody who was on our live stream Sunday. We had a beautiful one hour live stream. If you guys like it, comment below. If there's enough good comments, I'll do one more next week. And if you want to enjoy our community, our Zoom calls, our Discord, basically everything we have to offer for patrons and channel members, the link to join is going to be below. It's $5 per month. You get to participate in a Zoom call every week in our Discord and basically the community we have. There's no stock picks on my Discord or in my Patreon. I don't pick stocks. There's nothing like uh, you can financially gain out of this. But if you want to be a part of our community and hang out with us and you know just honestly have fun and be a part of this, check it out. Uh, even join for a month. If you don't like it, I'll refund you. How about that? See you next video.